Hi, I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage. I am the technical chairperson for the Rolls-Royce Owners Club of Southern California region. Uh, we're holding our monthly tech meet and today we're going to be working on the brake pumps and brake pump push rod for a 1972 Shadow. This car came in, wanted the air conditioning fixed. And you wonder why I have it apart like this. Uh, and then he said, look it over. So I took the car. I always drive a car if it's drivable before I do anything on the car, before I rack it, do anything like that, just so I get a feel for the car. And I took it out, pulled out this drive, went to hit the brakes at the next intersection, and I went, whoa, wait a second. Uh, they weren't, the Silver Shadow has a dual high pressure hydraulic system that um, if one system is down with experience, you can tell. Of course, it has warning lights on the dash the pressure warning lights, and none of those ever lit up. The, f the reservoir was full, so I go, this is not right. So normally, when I want to check out the pressures on a uh, car, with my experience, I, I, I can uh, just go and bleed the brakes, and I can tell if one system is up or down, just on a, on a quick check. So I bled the f number one system that had plenty of pressure, that was great, I went to the number two system, nothing came out. Now, when you have an accumulator, which is a high pressure booster on a car that goes bad. When you go to bleed the brakes, you may not have good pressure. It won't build, it, you'll get a little squirt, and then, but it'll pump. You'll get fluid coming through. This had nothing. Uh, so the first thing I did was, was uh, pull the hose off of the, the feed. It was a number two system that wasn't working, so that's the rear pump. Uh, first thing I did was check the hose feed, so I disconnected the hose, and it had plenty of fluid coming out, so it wasn't starving for fluid. So then I pulled the pump out. The brake pump is this, this item, it has a sleeve on it. If you look in here, you'll see it has two little um, daw of bosses down here that they screw into. And then you've got a housing that goes on there, and then you've got a hose going in, and then this is a high pressure line coming out. So. As it feeds fluid in there, this, these, these uh, pumps have these push rods right here. And this is going to be noisy, but if you watch this thing, watch this one up here. See, it goes up and down. Okay, that means it, that's what pushes this pump. So every revolution of the, the camshaft, which is two revolutions of the engine, that piston goes up and down, so it's pumping fluid down to the accumulators on the side of the block. So what I did is I pulled out this rear pump to check the push rod. Now if you look at this one, notice how it's far down there. The, pist the push rods should stick up here. There's an actual measurement, which we're going to do once I get this off, of when the, the, piston, the, the, the push rod is all the way down to the bottom of its stroke, so it's on the low side of the cam. There are two extra lobes on this cam for this. Um, then you've got uh, just over half an inch. The exact measurement is 0.522 inches to 0.525. So this one is down. It's stuck. Normally Rolls-Royce only sold the whole assembly, this whole housing, with the, the cam follower and uh, uh, this push rod, the housing, and then I think that dog on the top. And that's quite expensive. When they went to the mineral oil cars, they started having some issues, so they, they started selling this, just the push rod. Uh, so this is a mineral oil push rod, but it's exactly the same. It, uh, it fits perfectly. And if you look at this thing, this is obviously the top. It's the big fat part that, that hits the pump. And down below, underneath, you've got another, it's, it looks almost like a lifter. It's a, a solid lifter that follows the camshaft that this sits into. And if you look closely, you see it's narrowed down right here. So what happens is the system is designed, at first they, they were all just solid. And what would happen is it, if you had a problem in the accumulator, let's say the accumulator, which is supposed to build a certain pressure and then allow it to bypass and not build any more pressure, well, if there, it failed there and didn't bypass, it would just keep pumping and pumping and pumping and blow up an accumulator and ruin possibly cause some serious damage. So they, they did this fix. So what happens now is if the accumulator has a fault and it builds too high a pressure, this narrow part collapses, breaks. So then that, what happens is this drops down that, that half inch or so and it's stuck. So and where does that piece go? I'm sorry? Where does that piece go? 
Generally, it doesn't cause any damage. Okay. I've yet to see that. Uh, now, if you're really lucky, a good magnet will pull that out. But an old car like this, it's not very likely. There's another way you can get it out, if those of you who have access to it, but a regular arc welder. You can take and put a rubber sleeve around here and bring the, the, the probe down and hit the switch you know, with the engine grounded and all that and weld it to that and pull it out. <laughs> okay, it works. Still I've done it before. You still have the broken piece. Well, then that's a matter of getting in there, blowing around magnets and, and, Magnet. and getting most of the pieces. Okay. Generally, that piece down there doesn't cause any damage. Problem. I've yet to see anything like okay. that. I've done a lot of pump push rods. But um, this one didn't come out. I didn't want to get the welder out. I figured I'd do this one right. Um, so what I'm going to do now is pull that cover off. So there are 10 quarter inch bolts that hold it on. Are they, is there a torque to the bolt? There's always a torque to the bolt, but uh, let's say a quarter 28 bolt is probably eight to 10 pounds, which for me is, <laughs> that's my torque. I've got a built-in torque wrench. Took years of experience to, uh, in a lot of damaged bolts to figure out <laughs> the different torques. That didn't seem like much there. That's, that's, there's no pressure on this part right here, really. It's just gotta hold those pumps down. Is there a gasket? There is not a gasket on this. Originally what they did is they took a piece of silk string and laid it on there with some like Permatex aircraft type sealer. Okay. Nowadays we are lucky we have this amazing, all kinds of amazing products and I use an RTV, the right stuff. And what's important. That's that black. Mm -hmm. What's important is not to put too much on there. Because what you do is you raise it up a little bit. This is a machine fit. You just want a nice thin. You just want it to seal. And it, it, there's, it's not really sitting in oil here. There might be some splashing down there, but there's no puddles of oil on this, as you see once I get it off. And you notice I have all these rags on here. Yes. That is because underneath are your intake ports. Okay? And these are coolant passages. If you have, oh, here's a perfect example. If you look right here, there's some nuts and bolts. Yeah. Right there. They, if they go in here and you don't remember, you'll start up the car and you hear this click, 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 and all of a sudden, bam, 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 bam. Big misfire. If they get stuck on top of a piston and hit the head, they can break liners. Major engine repair. I know this because I've done it. And when I, I already pulled all the stuff off of here, it's on that part there, but the intake manifold, before you lift that thing off, you gotta make sure you don't have any nuts and bolts. And There's some debris in that one chamber up on the end there, Ronnie. Oh. It's a spider! <laughs> but she sat down beside me. <laughs> it was a spider, by the way. Yeah. It's right there. <laughs> <laughs>